G'day everyone, Matt here. Now some of you might remember a little while ago we did a review and introduction video to the Char Gorilla Acorn Kamado cooker. Today we're going to be looking at the smaller version, the little cousin, the Acorn Junior. Now there's a lot to like about this little cooker, so let's break it down and have a bit of a closer look. So first of all, what's in the box? So in this case, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. You get your barbecue here or the main body of it. Uh, the only assembly really required for this thing is you need to put the handle on here and these legs down here and one at the back you need to put on. So for assembly, you do need a screwdriver and a small socket uh, or spanner, but it's a really straightforward assembly. And also inside, you will get your grate and we'll have a little bit of a look at the inside shortly. So if we look at the top half of our Acorn Junior here, these things really are just a smaller version of the larger Acorn uh, Kamado cooker. So starting at the top, we've got our top vent here, or I guess air outlet. Uh, and it's got a little tab here for opening and closing it uh, to stop you burning your fingers. And you'll see that it's got a scaled system here as well, or a numbered scaling system. So very easy to set your vent uh, using that. It's very handy. Moving down here, we've got the um, just the standard uh, Char Gorilla temperature gauge that reads from both Fahrenheit and Celsius. We've got our handle here for opening and closing the lid and our little clip here to keep the lid uh, clip shut while we're cooking. We've also got a couple of handy carry handles on the side here for when you're transporting it around, which is really handy for a smaller barbecue. You're likely to be moving it around quite a bit. Right, so moving down to the bottom half of the barbecue, you've got your ear inlet uh, vent here. And again, that's got a numbering system, so that's really handy for when you're uh, setting your vents. And it's got a little plastic tab there as well for opening and closing that. And down the bottom on either side, we've got these clips. And this bottom portion here, we just undo the clips, slide it forward, down we come, and that is your ash catcher. So really handy when you want to empty your ash after a cook. Right, so let's have a look inside. Okay, so on the inside, we've got our grate here that we're going to be doing our cooking on. Uh, you can see that it's a reasonable size, it's not huge, you're not going to be cooking briskets or racks of ribs, but you could easily do a whole chicken or some steaks, maybe a roast or something like that. In the centre here we've got our uh, centre insert which we can remove if we need to refuel at any point, unlikely, but it does happen on occasion. And you'll also get this little tool with it as well that'll come in the box, and that is just for lifting out the grate, so it sits under like this, and out we come. So while we've got our grate out, we can have a look inside. We've got uh, down here, I guess our charcoal basket. There's a little bowl that sits inside of here and this just lifts right out. So that makes it pretty easy for cleaning. You can see the dust collector down the bottom there. So the other thing you can see here is that there's a bit of a gap, about a half inch between uh, the, the charcoal basket, uh, I guess, and the side of the barbecue. So this helps with the fuel efficiency of the barbecue, but it also uh, means that if you do put your hand on the side of the barbecue during a cook, it will be warm, but you're not going to lose your skin. Okay, another thing that you might have noticed is that uh, inside the, the basket or the bowl here, uh, you can see there's a couple of little locators or three little locators here. And what they are for is for a little ceramic heat deflector. And that just sits in there. Now, fortunately, this heat deflector doesn't come with the Acorn Junior like it does with the larger Acorn. But if you are going to buy one, I do really recommend that you do get the deflector as an add-on. Uh, it just really increases the scope of what you can cook. Without it, sure, you can go hot and fast and do your steaks, but with it in, that introduces the capability of going a bit more low and slow as well. So great for your roasts uh, if you're doing a whole chicken, anything like that. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll get the barbecue down on the ground and off the wooden table so we can go through the setup and getting it lit. So first things first, whenever I get a new barbecue and I'm trying to learn the nuances of it, I try and baseline everything as best I can. So what I mean by that is that I will try and use the same amount of charcoal and where possible the same type of charcoal when I'm first learning it. So in this case, we're gonna put in a half chimney of charcoal and set that just down the bottom there. Now, if you prefer to use a chimney starter to light your coals before you tip them in, that's absolutely fine. But like I say, it's always good to baseline it by using the same uh, volume and where possible brand of charcoal. Uh, but today I'm gonna to be using the flamethrower to get these lit. Right, so we'll get our heat deflector in. And then our grate. Now 
Now, like I spoke about earlier, we want to baseline our settings. So we're going to go to number one on the dial there, up the top, and down the bottom here, we're going to open it up to two. You would have heard me talk about baseline in there, and I think that's a really important thing when you're learning a new barbecue, because uh, all barbecues behave differently. So we know that in this instance, we've set our top vent at one and our bottom vent at two. We've put in half a chimney of charcoal, and we're just going to sit it there and let it come up to whatever temperature it settles itself out at. Now, if that temperature is a little bit low for you or a little bit high, then you can adjust your vents by bringing them in a touch. But it just gives you a good baseline for, hey, if I, these are my vent settings and this is the amount of fuel I'm using, I know where I'm at. But it's been about 20 minutes heading up now and the barbecue seems to have settled itself out pretty nicely. We're sitting at about 275 degrees Fahrenheit or around about that 135 Celsius there. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the gauge, but that's what it's showing there. So that's actually a pretty good setup there, I think. Right, so that's a basic rundown of what you get in the box, the basic setup of the barbecue and how to get it running. Now let's have a chat about a few other things. First thing is price point. So these retail in New Zealand from Bunnings stores generally, and you're looking about $299 for the base unit. If you do want to buy the uh, deflector on top, you're looking about another $60 for that. So in comparison, I guess, to other smaller barbecues of the same size, they are a little bit more pricey, but they are incredibly efficient barbecues. So depending on how often you use it over time, you could claw some of that back just by using less fuel uh, where you're using a half a chimney a cook in that barbecue and that might last you two or three cooks. Uh, you might be using a half a chimney or even more in another barbecue that will only last you one. So it's weighing up the pros and cons there. So let's quickly talk about some pros and cons with the Acorn Junior. So there's a couple of pros that stand out to me. Uh, the first one is that uh, unlike uh, some other Kamado or a lot of other Kamado styled barbecues, they are made out of steel rather than uh, a ceramic. So for one that keeps your price point down, if you're buying a ceramic one, it would be a lot higher than $300. Uh, for two, um, they're a lot lighter. So uh, if you're someone like me who competes, I like to move it around. I'm taking it to and from competitions. So I just feel a bit safer having the steel construction. Um, we don't want it to happen, but if it dropped or fell over, it's not going to shed it into a thousand pieces. It'd be very costly to replace. Another pro is the fuel efficiency. They're incredibly fuel efficient. Uh, you can use uh, your half a chimney of charcoal or however much you use over multiple cooks. You can shut them down, they'll stop. You can come back next time, shake the dust out, and you've still got fuel on there ready to go. So um, fuel's not cheap to buy. And if fuel efficiency is a consideration for you, then this is a great barbecue to start at. On the downsides, the one real standout for me uh, for the uh, Acorn Junior is that unlike the bigger Acorn, it doesn't come with that ceramic deflector plate. It would be really handy if it did because it just opens up what you can cook on it and really introduces that more low and slow side to it. So I feel you've got a lot more versatility with it. If you are buying one, I'd highly recommend you get one. But sadly, they don't come standard with the barbecue. Right, so let's talk about accessories for the Acorn Junior. Uh, first off, we've already covered one. It's the ceramic deflector. So we've already touched on that. Another thing you can get for it is a cover. So they are, they are as we mentioned, of a steel construction. If they're left outdoors, uh, eventually they're going to rust. So if you're keeping it outdoors, I'd recommend putting a cover on it or because it's small and portable, just keep it in your garage or shed or wherever you like to store your barbecue gear. Right, another really handy accessory for the Acorn Junior, particularly if you're into SCA cooking and you want those really nice grill marks on your steak, is some grill grates. So grill grates don't actually make a set specifically for the Acorn Junior, but they do make one for, I believe it is the Weber Smoky Joe, which is their smallest kettle shaped uh, barbecue and they fit uh, perfectly in the Acorn Junior. So check those out if that's your thing. Right, so the last thing I'll touch on is just cleaning and maintenance. Um, it's pretty straightforward, a lot like other barbecues. In terms of cleaning, a, you want to empty your ash catcher after every few cooks. You know when it's getting too full, it'll start blocking your air inlet. So this is a small barbecue. You're not going to let it go too long before you empty that, maybe every two to three cooks. In terms of cleaning your grate, I'll get a wire brush on there after every cook, particularly while it's still warm. When uh, If you've got any sauce or fat or anything that's spilled onto the grate, when it's warm, it's still soft, easy to get off. If you leave it till it's cooled down, it can be a lot harder. And in terms of maintenance, it's just looking after it really. Uh, if you've got a cover, put it on when you're not using it or 
keep it stored in your garage or shed or wherever you like to keep your barbecues. Uh, and that way it just avoids anything rusting out and it's going to increase the lifespan of your barbecue. So as always, we hope you guys pick something up today. It's always good to get a bit of a look at different bits of kit that are out there on the market and make sure that when you're buying a barbecue, you're getting the right one for you. If you do like our content, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. We really appreciate your support and we'll see you next time.